Sonny Anderson. Uh, someone put me in touch with Sonny. Sonny was Stan's predecessor, and Stan has to tell some Sonny stories. If not, they're in the book. <laughs> but Sonny was a – they had a lot of similarities. I don't even want to go into that, Stan. If you want to, please do. But um, the, at the core of both of them are just really great, great people. And I just remember that Sonny, it was very important to him to sit next to Stan in the uh, in the audience for this celebration. And um, he was, so that was really, I, I called up Stan and I assured them they could sit together and everything. And that was when I first met Stan. And then because I had known of him, then I had my other thing. I said, Stan, I need to interview you, you know, for my website because I, I love not only the people who worked with Walt in those days, but I, I think Disney is still amazing, and I love the current. I love the live entertainment. You know, really, the live entertainment in Disneyland is the kind of entertainment that you just, you know, it's top-notch. Stan hired the best. You're seeing the best entertainers. So, you know, I love that. Plus, you've got your shows and your parades and all kinds of things. So I had to interview Stan, and interview, so to answer your question, it was definitely that tribute to Fulton, which is really kind of rare. Um, a lot of people don't know about that. But, yeah, interviewing Stan the first time was so funny because he was still working for Disney, and he would tell me so many stories. And it's like, that's not for the website, though. You know, Now he's retired. You put him in the book. So I don't know if that is. That may not be the most exciting. Um, I met my wife at Disneyland. That was kind of exciting. Um but to ask your question, you know, there's, there's, I have so many great Disney memories. I started working there in '88 in TV animation, and because I love Disney, I always just tried to be in, as involved as I could, meeting whoever I could. And even though I was stationed at the Disney Studio in Burbank, um, I got a silver pass and I was able to go to Disneyland and uh, whenever I wanted. And that kind of opened the door for me. I mean, before that. You know, I went once a year with my family. I would never stop and listen to a live band. I would never go. You know, I might be walking by Carnation Plaza Gardens and stay for a song. But when I got that silver pass and I was able to go there and stay for a set or two, and uh, Stan was conducting the band. He was the band leader. They had all the big names. I mean, it was the last of the real big name, big band leaders, and Lionel Hampton and Buddy Rich and all these people. And then you had Stan Freeze, Stanford Freeze. He was Stanford Freeze in the Disneyland Big Band. And that was just, you know, those were really, really magical times. Without that pass, I don't know that I would have done it. But it, it would, it's what started me with just a fascination for, you know, so many things Disney. So now it's the Stan Freeze Kevin show today, Kimmel? not mine. So I guess I should shut up for a little bit here. <laughs> Do you know Kevin Kimmel, Mr. Wolf? I don't. It's nice to meet you, Kevin. I don't know if you're still on the air yeah, here. Yeah, still on. Yeah. Yeah, I'll thank you. you man, right. Right. Hmm. Um, and Kevin, you were there for how many years? 37, was it? I was there from 30, uh, 37. I started in 81. Wow. Yeah, I didn't hear your whole thing because I um, they interrupted to, to talk to me here. So, But were you with the band? Is that where you were? No, I was oh, he's the sound, sound technician. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Stan, yeah. did I? Did you ever introduce yeah. me? I know a few times we walked around the park and stuff. I don't know. I don't know if we ever met. I don't remember. Yeah. How neat. Yeah, the sound technician. But the thing is, you know, we were talking about some some crazy early on stories uh, that that stuck out in my mind. One of them, you know, when Disney World first opened down there, we had great musicians from all over the country. They all came down there, not really knowing what to expect not knowing it was going to be 100 degrees every day, 100% humidity, rain, you know, and you're playing out and all that stuff. So I had a lot of musicians quit within the first six months, which meant I had to find new people to replace them. And one of my favorite stories about all of that was one time I got a call from a trumpet player in Atlanta. And he said, hi, my name is so-and-so. I live in Atlanta. I'd like to come down and audition for the band. I hear you have an opening. I said, yep, we sure do. He said, okay, I'm going to be staying. I'm going to come down. I'll stay at the YMCA in downtown Orlando. And if you could pick me up, that would be great. I said, I'll pick you up, and I'll take you out to the park, and we'll have you perform with the band, have you play some tunes, a little Dixieland, blah, 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 blah. And so, great. Now, the next day, here I am. I get in my car. I go to pick this guy up, and I'm going down a, a street called the Orange Blossom Trail, and on the news, I hear 
itinerant trumpet player from Atlanta murders local over a pool game at the YMCA. And I freak out. My jaw drops because that's the guy. And so I remember making a U-turn in the middle of the street and just driving back with my, my jaw down, coming back home, walking in, sitting down and saying, you're not going to believe what just happened. But this guy killed the guy. Now I'm thinking, what if I had hired him and I'd gotten really mad at him about something and we'd had an argument? It's possible, you know, he would have taken his trumpet and killed me, you know. So you, you, run, you run into some wild, wild stories in those early days. You're talking about Sonny Anderson. Sonny Anderson was Mr. Disney Entertainment for so many years, and everybody loved him. But, boy, I'll tell you, there were some – you think there's some crazy stories about me going around. There was really <laughs> fun stories about him. And so uh, I said to one of the leaders of the bands that Sonny was in at one point, his name was Judd Dinot, Sonny was playing at the Blue Bayou drums before he became the booking manager. And he would show up late. Every day he was late after lunch. He would go out with the boys at lunchtime and whatever. Anyhow, he was always late. So I said to Judd Dinot, his boss, I said, why don't you fire Sonny? And Judd looked at me and said, how can you fire a guy named Sonny? (laughs) (laughs) That said it all, you know. That was the story of his life. Can I add something? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rich. Oh, okay. Well, I was at Disneyland from 1975 to 1978, and so I remember those days well. And as Stan's telling these stories, I smell the place, I can hear the place, I can feel the place. There was nothing like it back in the in the 70s for me as a kid. But uh, the story I was thinking about Stan is that he knows one of the most famous people in the world, and his name is Donald Duck. Do you have a story about him? Uh, Donald, yeah, well, that, yeah, uh, Donald Duck and, and Mickey Mouse. I got a lot of stories about Mickey Mouse. Uh, Donald was Glenn Gailey, uh, the the one that was like the the real Walt, Walt's favorite Donald Duck for sure. But the, the the crazy stories are about the fellow that played Mickey Mouse, and uh, he was an elderly fellow, uh, bald hair and uh, bald head, and he looked old. And so we're doing we're doing a, a character show at Carnation Garden. I have the band up there, and I introduce, and here's Mickey Mouse. Well, out comes Paul with his, you know, and, and he trips. And when he and this is a kiddie show. There's 200 kiddies out, the kids out there in little tiny chairs, all screaming and hollering. Paul falls, trips, his head comes off, rolls across the stage <laughs> at Carnation Garden. <laughs> And the audience, all these kids are horrified, <laughs> and the band is horrified, and the band can't keep playing. They they are laughing so hard, and Paul is going, God damn it, God damn it, God damn it. He's swearing at the top of his lungs uh, in front of all these kids, trying to find his hat, his head, the Mickey head, and put it back on. The other, the other great story about him was – New Year's Eve, they decided, Marilyn Carroll and Steve Carroll, uh, two uh, really wonderful show directors at Disney for years, were producing New Year's Eve. So part of it was that, that Paul Cabot, Mickey Mouse, the elder gang guy, was going to get on top of the Matterhorn, and they were going to dress him like baby New Year. And they were at the uh, stroke of midnight, they were going to push him down the Tinkerbell uh, trapping. So he w- and then he was going to be followed by a spotlight, and then the park was going to play uh, in the loudspeakers "Old Lang Syne" as Paul was supposed to be flying. Well, Paul gets up there, and he t- and, and he looks down at what he's supposed. They've got him all hooked up. They had the harness especially made for his height and his weight, but they hadn't taken him up there yet. Well, okay, so here it is. It's time to go. He's up on top. They got him hooked up. He looks down and he says, "No way." I'm not going to do that. He, and so they, the announcement comes on, ladies and gentlemen, uh, baby New Year. And Paul is up there playing. He says, I'm not going, I'm not going, I'm not going. Steve and Marilyn pushed him. 
They pushed him off the ramp, and he's flailing all the way down. <laughs> he is flailing and screaming and swearing uh, in his baby New Year outfit all the way down the Tinkerbell chute. <laughs> yeah, and nobody knows it. Yeah, and here he is. You know, he is supposed to just, like, look like he had a bow and arrow as, as the baby New Year would have. You know, he ended up throwing that down at the crowd below. And uh, and just flailing all the way down. So another one of those good stories. Yeah, I should probably say for the sake of Disney, now they have the real Mickey Mouse. They don't have it, have people play him. They have the real Mickey Mouse in the parks now. But yeah, Paul Cowles. Yeah, right. Paul was quite a character. He started the Ice Capades, I believe, before he was even. That's how him. he started. Isn't it, yep. Stan? And, and Walt hired him. And Walt Walt hired him specifically. And he hired Wally Bogue specifically yeah. and paid them. He paid Wally Bogue really well. And uh, Wally came in and was the the face of the Golden Horseshoe. He was it. He was Mr. Golden Horseshoe for all those years. Yeah, he so, was. And, and Paul, Paul was the other guy who handled it. Yeah, so. So yeah, where I was talking about Fulton, uh, Stan, that was, at, you know, what I was talking about, the Golden Horseshoe Review. And, yeah, that was Wally's show from the beginning. So just to kind of yeah. put that together, and Betty yeah. Taylor, yeah, and Betty, well, yeah, and Betty, Betty. Taylor. Then was I had Walt. Year. Then I worked. I worked with those two. I worked with them at, at Disney World when we opened Disney World in Florida. They brought um, Wally down there uh, for uh, the first. I don't know when we opened. And he yeah, the Diamond for Horse quite a while. Yeah, the Diamond Horse review down there. So there real was a lot of Wally. Fun. Wally started in vaudeville. Betty, she right. had performed with Sinatra. She performed in Vegas. Just to kind of give an idea, I mean, these are top-notch performers. Do you do you have any stories of them from the Diamond Horse? I'm putting you on the spot because I don't I don't know if you ever told me any stories about them. But what were they like? I mean, they were great performers. Great performers, wonderful performers. You know, absolutely the old that was old school, wonderful showbiz. Both of them, classy acts, really classy people, and uh, and just did a great job. There are no you know, crazy stories I can tell about either one because they're just really professional, great people. And what was – now, in At Florida, you were the band leader. Were, huh? How were you involved with the Diamond Horse in Florida? Because you were the band leader there, right? Or was this a different I was time? the leader of the Disney World Band. No, I was leader of the Disney World Band, the concert and marching band. Yeah. And this, uh, so I really didn't have anything much to do. That band down there uh, was already put together out here and then taken down there. Um they had Arno Marsh, and they had Buzzy Mills and um, Warren Sauer on drums. Cool. And uh, so, yeah, it's just unbelievable players. You know, it, the, the caliber of musician at the Disney theme parks is too good for the room. I mean, it is so unbelievable. All these, first it was Sonny that had that standard, and then he transferred that standard of to me, to only hire the really best. And I'll tell you what, I can't say enough about the quality of the musicians and the entertainers at the Disney theme parks. It is so good. You know, I mean, it's just, it's non-parallel, you know, and, and Wally Stan, was all hire, part of that. Stan, did you hire the New Orleans jazz players that walked the streets there? You remember that? Yeah. Yep. I hired those those guys were sure. great. Those guys yeah, there was a number of groups over there. I hired a number of those groups. Uh, Teddy Buckner was over at, uh, played there at nights. And, uh, you know, Jack, uh, Jack McVeigh, who actually had a yeah, hit called Open the Door McVay. Richard. Yeah, he had, a, he, had a, he had a big hit in the 50s called Open the Door Richard, and he didn't make yeah, a yeah. penny off it. Back then, the record companies really took advantage of the black entertainers financially got him into real bad contracts and that was the case with jack mcveigh and okay. open the door richard it sold a million copies he didn't make a nickel. Yeah. so um, you know it just breaks your heart so, it breaks your heart we've come a long way since then thank heavens so stan you have you have such a great piece of insight into um the early days of disney um everything Working there, your family, and um, I've been to your birthday parties, and I've, I've, you have the friends from Disneyland brought in. So 
and I've been to your house, and I would say that you are truly 